There it is. Series 7 Apple Watch. My new Apple Watch. The newest, the greatest, the best. I'm going to set it up from scratch as if I had never had an Apple Watch before. I've got a brand new iPhone that I also just got. I've been spending money hand over fist lately. Uh, but let us go through the setup process to get the most out of the Apple Watch in the least amount of time. So I bought the new Apple Watch Series 7 and started to set it up. Now, <laughs> this is the packaging. Apple, for some reason, really overpackaged this, at least as far as I'm concerned. There was so much, uh, so much extra packaging for such a small little thing as this Apple Watch. Um, but setting up the Apple Watch, the initial setup of the Apple Watch is actually quite a joy. It all is going to work based on your smartphone, your, your iPhone. Uh, the iPhone is the key ingredient to make the Apple Watch the Apple Watch, to make it all work. Everything flows through your iPhone. And when you first set up your Apple Watch, you will, uh, all you do is you uh, t take it, turn it on. Uh, I had to charge mine for a few seconds because it didn't seem to fire up right away. It doesn't take long to change. To charge, excuse me. But as soon as I had done that, as soon as it was charged, uh, I brought it near the iPhone and you get a notification that says, would you like to pair it with your Apple Watch? Which I said, yes. And that starts the entire process of the watch pairing. And you can see here, to the first thing it does is it uh, creates a kind of a QR code. It's a special kind of blob code that Apple has that pairs the watch. And once that happens, all you do is you point your phone at the watch and the pairing process starts. It'll ask you a few questions right off the top, such as which wrist do you want it on? Your left or right wrist? Of course, Apple's uh, terms and conditions. Uh, and then it starts the pairing process. And the pairing process takes a little bit of time. It takes a while to go through. It'll interview you with a few other questions, such as how you want to set up sharing as you go along. Um, nothing, too, no, no, nothing too kind of groundbreaking as far as decisions goes at this point. Once the initial pairing is complete, then they ask you about setting your prefer preferences. Now this, I loved. They have the ability, uh, this uh, it's, uh, number seven, or the Apple Watch Series 7, has a huge face compared to the earlier versions. And you can make the text quite large on it, which I appreciate, many of you will appreciate as well. Then once you've decided on that, you uh, then set up your passcode, which we'll use over and over again in order to access and unlock your watch. Uh, they'll ask you to verify that. And once that's done, you're set to start setting the different parameters up. Uh, they tell you about the different features that are in, such as the new blood oxygen feature. That's all uh, that's explained to you. Uh, whether or not you want to use auto updates, which is a good idea with the Apple Watch. They update it on a fairly regular basis, but it'll update when it's just sitting on its charger at night. So you, I would recommend that you choose the uh, that you choose to keep the Apple Watch uh, constantly updating. And then they go through some of the other services, Apple Pay, if you want to have that in, in, enabled or not, if you want to use Apple Pay on your watch. And also uh, an emergency fall detection uh, process so that you can use your Apple Watch by long pressing on the crown to call emergency services and for it to also detect hard falls that people may have, uh, that, that people may have experienced. Then you go through the installation process of which apps do you want to have installed. And the app view is something that I find really important. I hate the cluster view. I think that that's a really difficult thing to manage. Uh, just <laughs> Your fingers are just far too fat in, to do the cluster view as far as I'm concerned. So I like to go with the list view. And the list view is great because you can just roll the crown up and down to see all of your apps listed out. And you will have quite a few apps installed on the phone. Uh, by the time you're all, by the time you're done, there's a, there's quite a roster of different apps and the cluster view just is, it's too hard to pick something out and you have to recognize the icons list view for me, at least in, in my opinion, far, far more useful. And then it's going to complete the syncing process. It's going to go through and continue to sync. It'll take a little bit of time, but once it's done, you're ready to start using your Apple watch. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, at the Apple Watch interface on the iPhone and take a look at some of the basic things, and the basic process of using the Apple Watch app, which you'll pretty much live in as far as setting up different settings on your Apple Watch. Now, right at the very top of the app, you can go in and you can change some of the preset settings that we have set up. For example, if you decide you want to go to the cluster view or the call the grid view, you can change those sorts of the, those sorts of settings as well. Your general settings and all of your other 
different parameters are set here. Now you will dive into them to, to set up different custom settings as you move along, but this is where you control Siri, you control the haptics, uh, which is you know how much the, when it vibrates and how it informs you of different things. You set up the emergency SOS that we talked about briefly here. So all of those different settings are right here at the very top, the main settings. Then we've got the different app settings. And now it, Apple will install a preset uh, collection of different apps, which you see here, which you can go in and you can modify. You can either turn them on or off as far as updates goes. Uh, but these are the basic apps that you're going to be using all the time on the watch. Apple's done a pretty good job of setting up the main collection. And for the most part, they're all going to reflect whatever you have already set up in your Apple ID, your Apple account, or on your iPhone. And then beneath this you have the different available apps. Now, as soon as you install an app on your iPhone, if it's available for the watch, it will appear here. And if you want to use it on your watch, you can then install it. Now, I've just installed a few that I use myself, but you can see these are all the different apps that I have installed on my iPhone, and they are all available here if I want. And it is one I should actually add Messenger because I do use Microsoft Messenger, or uh, 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 sorry, Facebook Messenger, a fair bit. So I'm just going to tap on install that. And once it then next time it syncs with the Apple Watch, it will be available on my watch as well. And it will carry all the settings forward as well. So that's how you modify your Apple Watch and you add to it. Now, the other big place that we modify our watch is in the face gallery. This is where we change which faces are available to us on the Apple Watch. And, and you can, depending on your mood or depending on your activity, you can change the faces to be customized for the activity that you are involved in. Uh, and so as you scroll through, there's also downloadable faces, but you can see Apple has got an awful lot of faces available to you that you can select. Now, some of these faces are kind of more capable than others. They've got, they've all got, of course, the basic date and time function, but Apple has something called complications that they include. I think it's the weirdest name, and it's probably the worst name <laughs> as far as a technology is concerned. But let me show you what happens with complications. Here on my watch, I have installed just two faces. Contour, which is the one that I have up now that you can see now. <clears throat> but I also have this Meridian one. Now, the Meridian feature allows, the Meridian one has a series of four complications. Now, the complications are those four little dots, the four little dots in the center, and they will reflect different capabilities that are built into the Apple Watch or your iPhone, different apps that you've installed. So if we take a look at the complications, the, they are set up so that you can have like today's date on it, and it will then show the date in that top complication. So there are different functionalities that are incorporated, but they can be really creative and they can be quite unique. For example, you can set up one of the complications, as I'm going to do right now, to be the camera remote, because there's a wonderful camera remote feature built into your watch where you can control the camera from the watch. So what you see here is my watch. I'm actually viewing it through my, <laughs> through my phone, so it's a little bit meta. You see the camera image, the same image that the camera is seeing on the face of the watch. And within the watch, then, we have shutter controls and basic camera controls. So you can control your camera from the watch. Now, extending that ability for the watch to talk to a Bluetooth device like it's talking to the phone uh, as a camera controller in real time, you can also pair Bluetooth headsets with your watch. Uh, and so you can uh, download directly into the watch, into your podcast or into your audiobook application. I, for example, have just set up Audible on it, which I am using uh, to listen to books as I go for a walk. So I can download the books onto my watch. And when I'm walking, it's counting my steps. So it's doing the fitness tracking. At the same time, I can leave my phone at home and still have my Bluetooth headset and still listen to music, a podcast, or in my particular case, an audio book. So it's really, it's really come a long ways uh, as, far as, as far as just providing some really nice, simple applications that make a big difference in your everyday life. 
Now let's talk a bit about communications because uh, Dick Tracy, <laughs> Dick Tracy all the way. Uh, the, the first time you use the Apple Watch as a phone, a phone call comes in, your phone is in a different room, the phone call appears here on your watch, it will freak you out a little bit. And talking into the watch is a little bit of a unique, uh, unique, uh, unique process. Uh, but I should point out that the quality of the speaker, it's a tiny little speaker, a little bit tinny, and the microphone, of course, is very small. You're not going to get quite the same performance as you get out of your phone, but it it suffices. I mean, it, typically speaking, it's because your phone isn't handy. Uh, so being able to make a quick phone call or receive a quick phone call on your watch, very cool. It's way more efficient uh, or kind of way more practical receiving text messages and sending and receiving text messages on your watch. Uh, again, your phone's in a different room, a text message comes in. You can reply to the text message almost instantly with some pre-baked replies. Apple's got a whole series of them and you can program your own auto response replies. Or you can, uh, the, I think the most efficient way to reply is to use Siri. Siri in the phone and the watch is a terrific asset. The watch is so small that it'd be hard to do, hard to navigate a keyboard. Uh, so getting any text entry or any data entry into the watch, a challenge, unless you can use your voice. And so Siri's integration with the Apple watch is a really important part of Siri. Now in the settings, you can set up Siri to be invoked either through the press of the crown of the button, or you can also make it a gesture. Apple's included all sorts of recognition of what your hand is doing to invoke different applications. And this is an accessibility thing. If people have, uh, if they have an issue with their hands and they can't maybe manipulate the controls, there are gesture controls that you can, that you can set up within the watch that will allow you to control the watch just by say, clenching your fist or tapping your fingers. And that's an accessibility feature, but kind of part and parcel of that is the gesture recognition, much as we have on our phone. So if I just, lift my wrist to my face to and and then speak it then uh, invokes siri to listen to me so for example what time is it it's 3 21 p.m there you kind of heard the quality now that also works as far as dictation goes within the within the uh within the messaging or email apps, you can, the dictation in Siri works just as well as it does on your phone, as far as I'm concerned. So for communication, it becomes quite a valuable asset because of the inclusion of Siri. So now let's talk about the different health benefits, uh, which I think probably the health and fitness aspect of the watch is the thing that's going to inspire more people to purchase the Apple Watch or any uh, any uh, smartwatch uh, than any other process. So the Apple Watch includes, uh, just to name a few, it includes a heart rate monitor. The newest, the newest version starting in version six includes an electrocardiogram, a, a version, a, a, I think they call it a single point electrocardiogram. It includes a uh, blood oxygen sensor, which I'm still kind of learning, but it's the first time I've had it. It'll do sleep tracking as well as fitness tracking. Uh, but let me show you one of the coolest features uh, that came out in version six, which is the electrocardiogram. And here's how that all comes together. You set up the electrocardiogram app and they, they have to, first of all, ask you your date of birth and get permissions, et cetera, before you start using it. But then Apple spends quite a bit of time making sure that you understand the limitations of this particular, of this particular feature. Since most of us don't know how to read an electrocardiogram or really even what they do, uh, they walk you through the things you should know and sh you should understand. This is a very surface level test. It's not deep medical science. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be replacing visits to the clinic or visits to your doctor, but it is fun and it can uh, provide some, I uh, guess, early warning of problems if your results end up being somewhat erratic or irregular. And so let's take a look at the, actually my first electrocardiogram test. Okay, all you do is you scroll down to the electrocardiogram test on your phone, on your, sorry, on your phone, on your watch. Uh, so I will navigate my way through into the ease and there's the EKG test. And now it tells you exactly what you need to do once it's launched. It says just basically touch your finger on to the crown. Now it requires that the wrist strap be uh, nice and firm and that it be touching your, your wrist, you know, kind of firmly planted on your wrist. 
and then it takes 30 seconds. And while it's going through the 30 seconds, it uh, gives you some warnings, again, not to take this as gospel, but in uh, just to use it for the, for the, at the level of information that it is designed for, which is simply information, not diagnosis. And then once that is done, it will then send the information to the Apple Health Kit, to your Apple Health Kit, and we can take a look at that. And fortunately for me, my electrocardiogram doesn't show any sign of defibrillation, uh, but it will now keep a record of this. And should I have seen something that concerned me, it would give me a reason to reach out to my physician and book a proper series of tests so that they can make sure that there is no problem. Now, all of this information that comes from your Apple Watch and uh, in other sources that are that are health-related from Apple all flows into Apple into a, a kind of a, a, a data conglomerator called the Apple Health Kit which contains everything that we do health-wise that we have connected to our Internet of Things, the Apple Health Kit will try and gather information from should you give it permission. So things like my ongoing, uh, my, uh, checking my pulse on a daily basis, my now my blood oxygen level, uh, the amount of fitness we have, uh, or the amount of exercise we do. It will also track, if you have smart scales, it'll track your body weight, it'll track any input that you put from external sources, such as if you've had blood work done, you can import all of the results of your different lab work. So you can have one concise document that gives you a really accurate snapshot of every, of all of the data that's available related to your health. So it's part Part of an entire ecosystem that Apple is putting in place around healthcare. Now, it's also a part of that, and kind of on the fringe, but the a little bit more fun is the whole fitness tracking aspect of the watch. Now, the, of course, it will track your steps. It will track how often you stand up and sit down. It will track your seat, uh, your sleep, your seat, your time seated. It will track your sleep. So it does a really nice job of encouraging you to be more mobile because when we see the results, when we manage to close those rings, what they call the activity rings, which is the amount of exercise, the number of steps, and the amount of times that you stood up in a day. When you can close those rings, you feel a sense of success. You feel a sense of accomplishment, even if you're maybe not really tired because you didn't exercise hard or you didn't do, uh, you know, an official uh, visit to the gym. Recognizing that you were still really active is something that's positive and something that we'll strive for. And sometimes, I imagine, you will look at your rings and see that they're not quite closed and then decide to go for that extra walk in the evening after dinner that you might not because it's being documented and you don't want to disappoint yourself through the documentation. So the gamification that the Apple Watch brings to the table around all of the fitness activities is terrific. And when we start to look at integration, the Apple Watch will integrate with all of the different fitness apps that are out there, including Apple's own new fitness app, which is an exercise routine, which they give you three months free with the Apple Watch. I haven't tested it out yet. But I have it configured with my preferred exercise of choice currently, which is the virtual reality game Supernatural, which I've been, which I've talked about previously when we talked about VR. Uh, but that it, it integrates with the Apple Watch. The Apple Watch tracks everything that happens within it. I get reports on how my friends are doing within the Supernatural universe. So it again, the Apple Watch kind of brings a sense of community together, and it puts it all on my wrist. When I first got my first Apple Watch, I thought it was a bit of a curiosity, and frankly, I thought it was a bit gimmicky. I didn't re really recognize just how integrated it would come become in my life. I thought it was just an elaborate step counter, and I just didn't really realize just how it would put me in touch with the entire Apple ecosystem or the entire internet ecosystem really and give me access to a lot of different features I want and convenience in a lot of different ways plus the kind of the subtle encouragement to be active to be a little bit more fit to be a little bit more responsible uh, with our with our health um, that's a really nice kind of side benefit I think of not just the Apple watch but all of the smart watches. I hope you found a lot of value in today's video. And if you have some other tips to share on the Apple Watch, I encourage you to do so in the comments. Now, if you found today's video to be useful, a like and a share would be greatly appreciated. And of course, if you've not yet subscribed to our channel, I encourage you to do so now. Till next time, I am Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.